What's up, Panthers Nation? We're back today with another video, and today I'd like to quickly uh, express my views about the Colin Kaepernick situation. Uh, this week it was announced that the Panthers were one of the two teams that were interested in Kaepernick after his workout. Uh, that Those two teams released by the agent of Colin Kaepernick. So, let's start off by expressing the facts of the situation. And that is, uh, there was a workout held where Colin Kaepernick threw down the field to wide receivers. Nobody covering him, nobody out there doing any type of plays against it. Nothing like that. It was just... A typical throw-and-catch workout. So here's the thing. You've got an NFL executive out there that graded this, this throwing ability as elite. Quote-unquote elite. Then, you've got uh, Tepper saying earlier on this week... We're not interested in a veteran quarterback. And I believe that was before uh, the game on Sunday. So, now that we have that established, and I'm not even going to get into the specifics of the waiver or any of that, here's my take on this. This is my opinion, and I tweeted this to to Eric Reed, you can read my tweet. It's pretty profound. It's simple. It's exactly what you expect it to be. Where I just expressed my opinion on what I think should happen. No politics involved. No nonsense with the NFL. Just what I think should get him signed. To either our team or somebody else's team. Firstly, an NFL executive is not going to tell me what is elite or not on the field. I, I refuse to believe that. You know, what I want is simple. I want training camp drills where he's throwing two wide receivers versus corners versus safeties versus linebackers. Have him practice against an actual defense. You know, put him in a training camp situation. Don't put him in a game. Put him in a training camp situation where he does drills from, from a training camp perspective. Then, have NFL scouts scout that from either our team or a different team. Have them scout that. And you will get an accurate reading and an accurate idea of how much he's either gained or lost in those three years as far as playing ability. Now, I'm not, you know, I'm the type of person that if I was coach, I would give the same test to everybody that we wanted to sign, you know, if they'd been out of the league for three years. You know, equal. I don't discriminate. You know, either you've lost your ability or you gained it. Or you still have it. One of the three. You know, if they've lost it, nope, move on to the next player. If they still have it, then we'll discuss what what we go, do from there. Contract-wise. If they've gained some... Definitely up the contract negotiations because that's going to be a, an important factor. And in Colin Kaepernick's case, we're only dealing with the first two. So, what I'm thinking is that, you know, test him properly in the way that I was suggesting and in, in what I sent to Eric Reed in a tweet. And... Let's just see if he's still got the playing ability 
or if he's lost the mental ability. You know, I understand he's been working out every day, you know, good, you know, let's test the mental part. How well have you been paying attention to other teams and their defenses and and uh, certain routes? There's so much that goes into the quarterback position that people don't think about, you know, so you're not just testing the physical part, you're testing the mental part as well. That's what people don't get that are NFL executives. You know, they think, oh, he's throwing it down the field and the wide receivers are catching it. Oh, his throwing ability must be elite. Come on, man. Do you only play Madden? Is that all you pay attention to? Because if that's all you pay attention to, of course you're going to think every quarterback that throws it a pass down the field like 50 yards and, and the road receiver catches it is going to be elite. Like, an NFL executive is not going to tell me or anybody in this league, coaches and staff or scouts, whether a quarterback is elite or not. I'm sorry, that's just not going to be, that's not going to cover it. You've got to cover the mental part. You've got to cover the physical part as well as the mental part. You know, it works both ways. You gotta have both. And I'm not saying he doesn't have it, folks. I'm not saying he doesn't have it. I'm saying test him. Let's see how much he's lost. Or how much he's stayed with his craft. You know, that's all I want to know. And then let the offers fly. Let the offers fly as they may. After that point, after he's proven that he can handle it mentally and physically. Because he's been distracted with, by trying to get this social justice cause uh, promoted and everything else, you know, when he's not working out. So, who's to say he has, has or has not been paying attention to other teams and what they've been doing? You know, who's to say he hasn't been watching tape? You know, if he has, by all means. Show that you have knowledge. That you haven't lost the knowledge that you you had before. And, of course, he's going to be able to prove that. So, I mean, at that point, contract negotiations. Here's what I think should happen with contract negotiations. The same thing I wanted for Eric Reed. You know, as long as he keeps his social justice stuff off the field in media Q&As, and does not become a distraction, does not cause stupid penalties on the field for fighting because of social justice and stuff like that. You know, I understand players are going to be sour grapes at him. I get it. You know, they're going to want to start fights. The thing is, if he is to be signed here, he cannot get in fights with these people. That's period. Stipulation does not change. Period. The last thing we need is more media people making this team a three-ring circus because it's already a three-ring circus. Let's, let's be honest, folks. So, with that in mind, uh, if he agrees to that, I'm okay with having him on the roster. Uh, as long as he holds to his word, you know, Eric Reed was offered the same thing, and he, he earned our trust. He earned my trust, and he earned the t- coach's trust. You know, the coaches didn't even have to mention it in contract negotiations because we knew, we knew there was a good chance he was going to uphold that those words and, and keep his promise. And he has, and he's produced on the field. He's done everything we've asked of him. So if the same is happens with him by all means sign him um you know at this point we are looking for a consistent starter you know Kyle Allen eh, he do, he's doing well enough as a backup that it's it's won us enough games that we're in the playoff race and then you've got Will Greer who 
uh, is untested. I, I feel like we should test him first before uh, we offer Kaepernick a contract. You know, after he's proven himself in workouts and uh, camp drills, you know, uh, after being properly tested. That's what I'm going to call it, is properly tested. Uh, you know, I'd like to see what Will Greer can do first. And let's test him out against the Redskins. Let's see what he can do. And if this, if Will Greer isn't the answer, then by all means, if Kaepernick proves himself, and chooses to uphold the words on the contract, or the unspoken part of the contract, by all means, sign him. I have zero problem with it. But he's got to prove himself first. He's got to prove himself first. We're not just going to sign some quarterback that's been out of the league for three years off the, off the free agent list. Yes, I recognize what he's done before. Yes, I recognize how good he was before the three years that he's been out of the league. But we're talking about now. We're talking about 2019 right now. How good is he right now? And we're talking about a league that says, what have you done for me lately? Not three years ago, right now. And I guarantee you every sports commentator is going to say the same thing. Every coach, every scout, everybody is going to say the same thing in the league. The only people saying anything different are the fans and loyal supporters of Kaepernick. And yes, I get it. Yes, I get it. He hasn't been in the league because of social justice issues, you know, in the league going after him. Fair enough. Fair enough. The league's after him. The league's hated us for, th for how long? Do we really need another target on this team, or do we want somebody that can actually play? Prove yourself. Show me you can play. I have zero problem with it. I feel like that's fair. I feel like that's balanced. I feel like, you know, no garbage waivers or any of that nonsense that the NFL is throwing at him. No. Nah. We won't do that to him. We won't do that to him. I know our management team, and I know we won't do that to him. We're offering him a fair move. Either take it or don't. Once that contract is out there. I mean, that's the easiest path that we can give him. To get signed here. And it's up to Tepper, it's up to Ron, what they decide to do. I have the fans have no say, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But what I suggest is that workout. That we do have a say in. And I would like to see that happen. And I would do the same workout for any other player that wants to sign here. You know, run him through the typical drills. You know, he's no different from any other player in the league. He's no different in that respect when you're trying to get signed to a roster. Every player, even veterans, get tested properly before they get signed. Every one of them. You know, you take a stress test, you take a health test, you take everything. Put them through the ringer. I want to know if this guy is still legit. Keywords, still legit. We already knew he was legit before the three years. We already knew that. We're not talking about that. We're talking about 2019 right now. Test him. We'll find out. Keep pounding. And happy Thanksgiving.